Hello, everybody, and welcome back to your favorite film podcast, The Average Film Enjoyer. I am one of your co-hosts, Trey, and I am joined today by my lovely, lovely co-host, Evan. Evan, how are you doing today? I'm good. Just uh, got off work and came home. Hell yeah. How, I got some pizza. How cold is it? It's actually nice now? today. Eight degrees today. Eight degrees? Is that Celsius? Yeah, we're in the pod- Celsius, dude. Like it's Okay, so it's like... 30, just a hoodie. It's like... 30, 40 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm zero degrees Fahrenheit is like 32 or 32 so Yeah. Zero I know Celsius what you mean. 30, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's like 40, 45 here right now. I'm in like shorts and nice. a sweatshirt. It's delightful. Hell yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm doing good. I'm excited to talk about our movie today. The greatest, what I, it was in my top five. And then I gave it a rewatch last night, and it's my number one of all time. Yeah. The greatest superhero movie ever made. Uh, I added it to my 100 out of 100 perfect films list. It is now part of that exclusive club for me. Hell yeah. Um, Love that. It's an immaculate piece of filmmaking. But It is. Um, we're going to keep it short today. Uh, try to keep it tight. Only movie news we're going to go over. Oscar nominations uh, were released this morning. Um, and of course... I want to preface this by saying the Oscars, although they are a big deal and they are very exciting and it's fun to predict who will win, they are a rigged system. What should win doesn't always win. Um, like Moonlight. And Moonlight, yeah, I think that's a great film. La La Land should have won Best Picture. Um, so obviously we got some snubs here. Uh, the first one I want to point out, no Rachel McAdams, an actress in a supporting role. What's Pain. that about? It's fucking what are we ridiculous. doing here? She was so. It's ridiculous. She was so good in Are You There, God? She was so yeah. good. Um, but I think Divine Joy Randolph is a lock for that. Just yeah, that's an easy dub. She's been winning. Um, other big snubs. We got a huge. I haven't seen Nyad, but the reviews are not very good. Yeah. What is Annette Benning doing here, and where is Greta Lee? Yeah. Uh, I love Margot Robbie, but Greta Lee was like, yeah, so perfect in past so lives. Yeah, uh, uh, I don't know what Elemental is doing. Yeah, this in, category is an absolute film. mess. It's ridiculous. I think Spider Man is a lock. If Spider Man doesn't win, I don't know. Boy in the Heron angry. might win. Yeah, because that what Boy in the Heron won at Golden Globes. Um, yeah, and it was supposed to be Miyazaki's last movie, so it's like a big. Yeah, that thing. might be a career, what people call it, like a career Oscar. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. Where it's less about the movie itself and more about their career. Yeah. Uh, I would have loved would to, have to see TMNT. You'd love to see yeah. what? I wanted to see TMNT as a nom. Oh, yeah. And I wanted Suzume very badly. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I don't know what Elemental is doing up there. It's not, it looks like every other Pixar movie made. Is there's nothing revolutionary yeah. about it? We got an insanely hype nomination in the best supporting actor role. Big Dick Mark <clears throat> Ruffalo coming for the fifth Oscar nomination. W won't win is it because our RDJ is, he, is, is he gonna, gonna win. Yeah, no. RDJ's a lock. It's, yeah, that's an easy lock. He's winning. Um, let's see. And obviously, we'll go more in depth into each category. Uh, you come the week before the Oscars. Um, yeah, me and like Trey we'll are gonna do... try and knock out a bunch of these movies so we can yeah, have a good. Do... I'm gonna. Try... I I want to try to do a documentary. Do... All the shorts. Shorts are easy though because you can bust all of those yeah. out in like one day. Uh... Once I watch American Fiction, and when I can finally watch The Zone of Interest, please God release it already. Yeah. Then I'll have seen all of those. Yeah. I think it's coming out on the 26th, but my theater has zero show times for the 26th, period. Like, you can't even look at what's playing that day. Oh, shit. So I can't even tell. Uh, best actor is... Uh, I would have... Yeah, Killian's going to win. I would have liked to see... Uh, I don't know his name, but the main guy from Past Lives, who is amazing. Oh, yes, he was very good. Charles Mel- Melton arguably snubbed. I... I thought he was good, but I, I don't think he's yeah. top five performances. Yeah, me either. Um, I think sound is a lock for Oppenheimer. Yeah, I 
the sound design of that movie is unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, we got a goaded Godzilla minus one nom oh in visual effects. Did you see the video? Win, I think. Did you see the video of the team watching the nominations this morning? And no. the moment they announce it, I'll send it to you. They fire confetti over the entire office and they're all celebrating. It's super hype. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah. And they did they made it look better than a lot of movies with yeah. like a minuscule budget. Yeah, the budget is so small. It's crazy. We um, have a crazy, maybe one of the most stacked best director categories ever. Here. Justin Trier, uh, Justine Trier for Anatomy of Fall, Martin Scorsese, Killers Fly Moon, Christopher Nolan, Oppenheimer, Yorgos Lanthimos, Poor Things, and Jonathan Glazer, The Zone of Interest. My yeah. TikTok for you page was, I got off work and looked and it was just, where's Greta Gerwig? Where's Greta Gerwig? Where's Greta Gerwig? I love Barbie. I gave it a five star. I love it. No. This category is perfect. Yeah. No Bradley Cooper makes me happy because Maestro's mid. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those are our Oscar noms. Um, we will be doing a more in-depth breakdown uh, yeah. the week before. Um, so you can uh, vote on who you think will win. You can do it with your family. It's always a good time. Um, oh, yeah, one, we... one thing that we have to talk about really quick before we get into Logan. Yeah. We can now say Academy Award win, or Academy Award nominated Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Oh my god, that's so <laughs> fucking stupid. John like, Williams is coming in just picking up the easy nomination. That's crazy. I love yeah, and I'm a huge John Williams fan, and I love that he is um I love that here, I'm gonna turn off my camera for a sec. My mom's gonna walk behind okay. me. Um, I love that he's getting a nomination as well, uh, but I would have. I, I, it's 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 not something we've heard from him before. The it's basically like in every other Indiana Jones. Yeah. Story. Uh, Two movies that I would have preferred are Past Lives and The Holdovers. Both have great scores. Yeah. Past Lives was amazing. So, an uh, interesting category, but yeah. But yeah, we'll so, get we'll talk more about the Oscars the closer we get to them. Yeah. Obviously, Let's... I think they were they were pretty decent. Yeah, yeah, they're not terrible this year, but there definitely are a few snubs. Um, but yeah, let's. I feel let's... like. Do you want to get into our IMDb movie for this? Yeah, year? this is. So, um, our IMDb movie is it's number two sixteen. Um, is Logan, directed by James Mangold. Um. Which I believe it came out, yeah, 2017. Go to year for film, by the way. 2017 was an amazing year for film. Um, I mean, you got Get Out, you got Lady Bird, Baby Driver, uh, Blade Runner 2049, Coco, Thor Ragnarok, Dunkirk. I mean, just an absolute stacked year of film. Um, so, before we get into our actual review of the film, I just want to give a little background on this film and the source material it is based off of um, because I think that, that it adds a another uh, level of depth to this film that I feel uh, most superhero films lack. Um, so the source material that James Mangold based this film off of, obviously we've had Hugh Jackman as, as Wolverine for 20 plus years. Like we've we've lived with this character. We, there are few characters that have gone through more despair and pain than Wolverine has at this point. Um, death has eluded him, no matter how hard he tries. Um, he is just, I mean, just at his wits' end. And the comic this is based off of, called Old Man Logan. Um, if you haven't read it, go check it out. It is one of my all-time favorite uh, comics. It's it's so good. It's so well written. Um, so essentially, in this comic, and they allude to this a few times in the film, which I didn't notice until this rewatch. Um, essentially, in the comic, is this is like old Logan is like sixty years old. He's old, and in the comic, he has a family. He has two kids. He has a farm. Um, and you realize that America is, it's basically split up in all these different sections. It's like post-apocalyptic. Everything's gone to shit. Uh, Red Skull runs the East Coast. Uh, Kingpin runs 
Central America and uh, the Hulk runs the West Coast. And now the Hulk is like turned into this evil. He has like a bunch of Hulk. I don't know if you've read it, Evan, but uh, he has like a bunch of like kids and grandkids and they're all Hulks too. Um, and Bruce Banner's like evil. And um, essentially Logan is like an old man. He talks about he hasn't popped his claws in 40 years. And they go into the backstory, and this is the only part of the comic I'll go over because there's a lot to it that James Mangold really takes it into a different direction, but it's a direction that I appreciate. Uh, but he alludes to this event multiple times in the movie. Um, so in the comic, you figure out Logan has kind of like become a pacifist because um, before everything went to shit, uh, Mysterio showed up at uh the the school for the gifted and all the x-men were there and like just like 20 or 30 super villains just charge in and logan's like everyone get out of here and um logan he just starts like massacring these super villains and i mean this is a graphic comic so you see like guys get their arms cut off their heads cut off just just Logan is just plow. I mean, this is prime Wolverine. Um, and he's just plowing through these guys. And at the end he gets to Mysterio and he like tries to cut through him, but he's not actually there. And Mysterio had been, had like cast an illusion and he takes away the illusion. And Logan has realized he has, instead of what he thought were super villains, he has killed every single one of the X-Men. He has murdered all of his best friends. He has murdered his entire family. Jeez. And they allude to that a few times in this film, um, talking about, like, when that, that first time Logan goes to visit uh, Charles and mm -hmm. give him his uh, medication, he lo Charles says, I know what you did. I know what you did. And then, um, yeah, there's just a lot of little moments that I think James Mangold was very intentional about alluding to that event because that is a very important part of this old man Logan story. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to, th to tell that and because I feel like it adds a level of depth that a lot of superhero films can't accomplish. Um, and it, it's just, God, this movie is so perfect. It's mm -hmm. so perfect. Um, so let's get into it. Evan, your opening thoughts. Yeah. Uh, let's get into it. I've only seen... I saw this movie in the theaters, and it blew me away. I adored it. And then I was like, you know what? That movie's really fucking depressing. And I did not watch it again until yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> it's a brutal movie. It's depressing, dark. But, oh my god. This is like the greatest portrayal of a superhero ever. It Yes. There's no superhero that has the level of depth that Logan has and you just see it. You can see so much in just his facial expressions and like Hugh Jackman is just an absolute star and even mm -hmm. like Charles is so good in this too. Like this pretty much on the brink of death. Like it's so hard to watch him just be a shell who's you know having seizures and not knocking people out when mm -hmm. he was so powerful like it really is a tragic story and it kind of like the movie even just starts and you you're in the like headspace of yeah this is gonna be rough like these are not prime x-men yeah and i think james mangold I mean, there's that line in there um, with the doctor who uh, the doctor. Um, I can't remember his name. Let me look at the cast here. Uh, well, Boyd Holbrook playing um, playing Pierce. So good. Menace. Shout out to my man, Boyd Holbrook. Yeah, he's uh, so good. Oh, my gosh. I love him so much. He was in a picture last year or in 2022 called Vengeance. That was really mm. good. Uh, he was in Indiana Jones, Dial of Destiny, and he was actually a shining light of that film. He's a great actor. I love yeah. him. He played an absolute menacing villain in this. Mm -hmm. um, 
But uh, the doctor, uh, Richard E. Grant, who, shout out to him, he was also uh, in Saltburn as the father. Um, he There's a line he says about Professor X, and he's like, a, he says, it's a degenerative brain disease in the world's most powerful brain. And What a line. Dude, just cooking with that dialogue. Um, and we open, we open on Logan in the back of this limo, and I think James Mangle does such a good job of of like showing us how much Logan has, like, how much of a like you said a shell of what he used to be in that first like two minutes. Like he gets mm-hmm. out of the car, he's like limping, and he even when he pops his claws out. One of his claws doesn't come all the yeah. way out. Um, and obviously, like, this is the... I can't remember. Did this come out before Deadpool? Was this our first rated R Marvel movie? I think so. So, this... <clears throat> oh, no. Deadpool came out first. Oh. Um, but this is a character that I, I believe should... He should have been rated R movies from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, I remember had uh, a copy of x-men origins wolverine the video game and there was yeah. two versions of it and it was like the normal version and then the uncaged version and that was like full rated m blood guts gore and it was crazy i played the demo of it like 20 times on my 360 back in the day yeah um and i think a lot of people didn't really know what to expect as far as a rated r x-men movie went but James Mangold like shows you what he's going to do in that first two minutes. Like a guy gets his arm cut off and like the shot of the guy getting the claws going through his yeah. head is crazy. Oh, so um, and we open with that. And he's obviously like, this is takes place in the future. It's 2029. Um, and it's like a decrepit Wolverine trying to take care of professor X um and trying to like get them out of this terrible situation that they are in down in mexico and then we get introduced to uh laura i want to talk for a little bit about i mean not only the dynamic between hugh jackman and daphne keen because it was so good yeah um but also how gnarly that first opening, like that first fight scene is at the compound with Laura. Oh my she God. rolls the head out in yeah. front of everybody. Oh. Oh. It's so good. It's so good. It's just so sick. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, go ahead. What should we touch on first? The dynamic. Like, I, yeah, I mean, we get in it. They're obviously father and daughter father and daughter in this movie yeah uh, the majority of her genes are from james or logan um and the chemistry be- between them was immaculate i mean they the, their energies were so perfect and they fed off each other and you could really tell not only because of the claws but because um of like th- the, like just the way they both acted was very similar yeah they got that same frown <laughs> yeah um and i i loved it i i mean i love her character i hope we get to see more of her um in future mcu projects um like i'd be so down for that i i mean i love that character uh, I love the two claws out of the hand and then the claws out of the foot. That's oh, the feet badass. claws are so sick. Uh, yeah, it's. I loved it. Um, yeah, it's kind of that like Joel and Ellie in The Last of Us. Yeah, yeah. dynamic too, mm-hmm. and it works every time. Yeah, it works especially well here, but it it just pulls you in. And gets you so invested, like, immediately. Yeah. I mean, first off, the claws are sick as hell, so you're already like, yep, I'm locked in. This is a badass little child that's probably going to murder a bunch of dudes. And, like, yeah. then you have... <laughs> My God. Them fighting together, like, 
the fight scenes at the end in the forest are nuts. Yeah. Yeah, they're crazy. Um, and that's that's that goes into another part I wanted to talk about um, is the going back to like he's a shell of what he used to be, you know, like we we've been with this character. Um, and if you're like me, you've grown up with this character. Yeah. Um, for 17 years, he, the, you first are introduced to him in 2000 in the first X-Men, which I also rewatched. Um, some people say spider, the first Spider-Man movie, it started like the whole superhero craze and s- superhero blockbuster movies. No, it was X-Men. <laughs> uh, br- yeah, fuck you, Brian Singer. You're a terrible fucking person. Yes. But you cooked with that first movie. Yeah. It's so good. Um, but, we, yeah, we don't get to see, like, this, like, rage-filled animal that Wolverine yeah. was. Um, and, um, but even before that final four scene, we do get to see it. Because another just... The fight scene, but the fight scene, the first fight scene between him and Wolverine and the scientifically created Wolverine. Yeah, X twenty four. Yeah, dude. Oh my gosh. Let Let's talk about that for a second. Yeah. That, that that scene. So we're on the farm, right? We we they Logan has helped these people. They've helped. Uh, yeah, he's just helped these people. And Charles is sleeping, and we get this really emotional scene from Charles, um, who he's he has dementia, and he's kind of, like, out of it this whole movie. You know, he's in and out. And you can tell this scene, he's, like, actually with it. And he's like, this is mm-hmm. the best night I have had in an extremely long time. Yeah. And because he thinks it's, it's Logan standing above him. And he's talking, and he's talking, and he's talking. And then you see Logan put his hand on his chest. And then you hear the claws pop out. And you're just like, what? It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, and, I mean, X-24, it's like taking prime Wolverine and putting him in a... It's, it's, he's prime Wolverine without a conscience. Yeah. It's really what he is. Um... Yeah, that first. I remember scene. seeing that scene <clears throat> in theaters, mm-hmm. and my heart just sinking. I was like, "Yeah, this is like the last X Men movie." Yeah, this and, is it. And that scene between, uh, and that fight scene, man, it's just, it's brutal. Yeah, because Logan, he doesn't go when he when X twenty four has. Laura, he doesn't go after her. He goes to check on Charles and he yeah. finds Charles dead. And then he puts Charles in the back of his truck. And there's this shot. There's so many shots of like that Logan thing where he'll like be staring down and then he'll look up into the camera and you can see it in Hugh Jackman's eyes. He's just like, oh, he's about to murder someone. Yeah. Um, and he starts walking over. And while X-24 is just massacring all of these, uh, all of these, like, just southern bumpkin dudes who Ugh. owned the land. Yeah. Very satisfying, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that fight scene between... Dude, when when the truck hits X-24 and he just gets impaled in the spikes, oh my god, it's so sick. And he's taking, like, shots to the face. Yeah. Like it's and the violence in this movie is it's so well done. Oh, it's so well done. It it fits the tone perfectly. Like it's super gory, but it's never yeah. like can't be gory. <laughs> it's like depression gore. Yeah. And it just and yeah, part, it works so well. The part where they are they're like lock claws and then X twenty four takes it and puts it like right here. Yeah. Puts oh. hair, and then throws him over his shoulder. <laughs> oh, just give me more of that, dude. That's crazy. It's so well done. Um, yeah, I, it's just so good. Um, I was wondering, what is your favorite scene of the movie? Yeah, my favorite scene, I think, honestly, is the scene in the hotel 
that shit is so cool. I mean, the oh, ending is is nuts, but the hotel. Charles having is having a seizure. Yeah. Yeah. And Logan's like the only one who can really. Yeah, and he's like climbing up the wall with his claws. Yeah. Oh my god. That's I think. So good. Yeah, that that was the first like when I first saw it, that was my favorite scene, and then rewatching, it, I was like, yeah, that's just like the coolest shit. Yeah. Um... I. I, I mean, we'll touch on the ending in a sec, but, like, one thing that I need to shout out is in the start of Deadpool 2, when Deadpool's just, met, like, lounging on the couch, and he's got mm-hmm. the fucking toy of Logan impaled on the tree trunk, just spinning in circles. The funniest shit ever. Yeah. Um, and I want to talk about uh, the casting here of Hugh yeah. Jackman as Wolverine. So, if you look, go and look in the comics... Um, Hugh Jackman is essentially the opposite of what Wolverine is in the comics. Wolverine is a little person. He is like three foot eight. He is really, 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 really. Wait, short. really? Yeah. Oh. Um, let me look it up here. Wolverine's height in the. I need comics. to go by. Yeah. Okay. I. He's five three. Um, Still, that's crazy. That's really short. And Hugh Jackman is 6'3". And a tank. So people were very, very, um, like, cautious or or very, very, I don't know what the word is. I don't know, just... Skeptical? Skeptical, thank you, uh, about this casting. But I think this has grown to be one of the best, su- ca- not even superhero casting, one of the best castings of all time. Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. I literally can't imagine anyone else. Yeah. I think if they want to recast him and make like a new Wolverine, uh, this isn't because Peter Dinklage is a little person. It's because (laughs) I think Peter Dinklage has that like rage inside of him that we've seen in some of his roles um, that he would kill it as Wolverine. Yeah. One thing I, I want to talk about is... yeah how we feel about number one xavier being used in multiverse of madness and now logan being used in deadpool 3 i i I know it's you know multiverse shit that's a whole nother issue Mm -hmm. i i think that once this movie ended they should have never touched these two characters again i think professor x is fine yeah, because um, his, I mean, but, his... Yeah, I do think, though, that if they were going to do Wolverine, I wish they would have done a new Wolverine, like cast someone else. They wouldn't yeah. have brought... Because Hugh Jackman's Wolverine, that is a very specific character. And this movie is such a perfect send-off yeah. for that character. Um, so I wish they would have just cast someone else to play Wolverine. Um, yeah. Um, I also I'm feel cur- like that would have made more sense. I know that Deadpool three is set before Logan, but yeah, still. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's talk about that ending because it truly is a great send off. Um, by the time they get to the forest, I had already been crying. Yeah. Um, the scene where uh, Laura and Logan uh, bury Charles uh, gets me every time. Yeah. It's... Um, and uh, there, but that final scene where that forest scene where the kids are running through the forest, um, and Logan is he has he has that like healing whatever that was that uh i don't know what it was it's like a serum of some, that just makes him mm-hmm. stronger um he had that but he hasn't taken it yet and he's trying so hard to catch up to them because he saw the guys chasing after him and um he finally gets close enough and he takes you're only supposed to take a little bit he takes all of it and yeah. at this point you know like okay, he knows this is going to be his last stand and then he is going to die. Yeah. Um, and, um, 
and then it cuts away from him. So you don't see the effects right away. And it cuts to all the kids running, and you see all these kids running. Some of them are getting taken down. The girl with the uh, oh. that was able to control, like, the forest. The wood chips, bro? Holy, Holy shit. Like, this oh guy's just getting God. cut up until he explodes. That shot explodes. with all the stuff in his face? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And then it's just, like, this crazy. tornado around him, and then it just explodes. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. And then and you he's... got the girl with the ice breath who shatters that dude's arm. Like, oh, my gosh. Unbelievable. These kids are crazy. Uh, which is why I hope we get to see them again in yeah. the future. Some dope characters, some dope yeah. powers. Um, but then they start. Some of them start getting caught, um, and and it starts like. And it's the most perfect superhero entrance you've seen it so many times. Where like they're doing fine, and then it kind of starts to turn away. Like the battle turns the other way. And then someone comes in and it just turns the tide of the battle. They start getting caught and you hear him yeah. in like far away. Like you hear that classic Wolverine scream. Yeah. And James Mangle cuts to him and he like, you see him, it looks like Logan, but you see him and you're like, that's Wolverine. That's yeah. like full power. Like he's just full out sprinting. And he's doing like the and have you seen have you also seen the behind the scenes of Hugh Jackson yeah, doing I have. this on like the treadmill? Yeah. I'm like, dude, that looks like so much fun to film. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's a classic. You, you see him, he's just going all out, just full sprinting. He even does the classic, my favorite Ugh. Wolverine move, where yeah. he jumps through the air. Oh, so good. And so he is, ta and he is just murdering these guys. And he shows up, and Laura has finally like gotten into combat, and she's killing guys. And then she gets surrounded by like fourteen guys, and you hear Logan. Um, and the best part about that scene where he jumps through the air and lands on the guy is he looks up, and he does the scream again, and yeah. he's like. Oh, this is so good. Um, and Laura, basically, uh, she's surrounded, and Logan just comes out of nowhere. And this is the first time you see Laura smile in the movie, where he, like, comes out of nowhere and just starts murdering all these guys. And she, like, looks at him, and she's like, that's my dad. <laughs> And I mean, and the battle proceeds from there. They 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 win. They kill everybody. They kill Logan. Da da da. Not Logan. They kill X twenty four. Um, well, what I I'm blanking. They put the truck on him. What happened after the truck? Where they put the truck on him and then? Yeah, he busts out and then picks up Logan and impales oh, him on the tree yeah, trunk. Oh, yeah, and they shoot him. And then Laura has the silver, ad or the adamantium that, bullet. Yeah, the adamantium bullet. She loads that shit up, and right as X-24 is going to, like, finish Logan off, a quarter of his head just explodes out. It's a yeah. it's sick shot. Yeah. Um, and then we get, like, one of the saddest scenes ever. So, so this is what yeah, it feels like. Yeah, this scene like. breaks God. my heart every time. But it also... It also makes me so happy because through these 17 years that we have spent through with this character, the one thing that has constantly eluded him is love and death. Um, and he gets both of those in the mo in this moment. Yeah. Um, you have Laura calling him dad. You have the obvious love that he has for his daughter and, he uh um he tells her don't be what they made you to be um because they both come from very similar situations um and then he it's the most heartbreaking line you see like this smile come across his face and tears start coming out of his eyes and he says oh so this is what it feels like yeah and I I think there's two ways you can take that. He actually feels an immense amount of love for Laura in that moment. And that's what he's talking about. Or the feeling of death. 
That's what I think it is. He's, he's talking about, yeah. like, oh, this is what it feels like to die. And you can see he is finally at peace, which is something that yeah. has eluded him as a character for so long. Uh, yeah, I definitely think you're right. Because, like, I mean, it's definitely a bit of that, like, father love that he's feeling. But um, it's definitely like an at peace acceptance with death it's yeah yeah it's a really beautiful heartbreaking scene like this movie is hard to rewatch honestly because it's it's so heavy yeah it it's, really is um but it's it's the perfect end for wolverine like yeah it's you brutal. really couldn't it's it's gory and it's badass. It it fits his his whole arc perfectly. Like it it's what mm-hmm. you want, even though so, it's like oh fuck it sucks to die. But like this is now at number one for superhero movies for me. The only yeah. one that I think is in contention here is my other favorite Captain America Winter Soldier, um, which also it doesn't have as much depth as this movie, but has an insane amount of depth to it. I love that um, movie. It's so good. Yeah, it's really uh, great. Where is this number one superhero movie for you as well? Yeah. It's so it's just immaculate. It's so good. Yeah, it's definitely my number one superhero movie. Actually, it's probably like right there with the Dark Knight, because you know, I, I will meet right yeah, the Dark Knight till I die. Um and then like it's definitely better than Guardians of the Galaxy 3, but Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is far and away my very favorite MCU movie. Like Yeah. That's what uh, I mean. So it's like that's that's just stratosphere up there. Guardians mm-hmm. of the Galaxy 3 this and uh Dark Knight for me. Yeah. But yeah, the Logan um, is untouchable. I I Rewatching it just kind of like It doesn't have super high rewatch value because it's such an emotional yeah. film. But it it's just so good. I don't know if I have yeah. That's my the only part that's rough. Movies in a list. I don't know. It's probably my top superhero movies. Um, probably this, uh, the Iron Giant, Dark Knight, Winter Soldier, Civil War. Nice. Those are my top. Iron five. Judge, good show. Dude, Iron Giant is the shit, man. That, that was my fav- my brother's favorite movie when I was a kid. And yeah. uh it's what, he, it's in my top ten of all time. It's so it's, good. Yeah, I have seen it many times, but like yeah. when my parents tried to get my brother to eat ham, mm-hmm. you know, like you buy a round ham, bake it, whatever, he was like, yeah. I don't want to eat it. They would call it metal mm-hmm. and he's like oh iron giant eats metal i'll eat metal and like my entire life i lived at home we called it metal it yeah, just stuck yeah. so funny some a line that i'll always quote from that movie and nobody ever gets is when um hogarth is talking about dean and he's like dean is good um and the iron giant he just goes dean it's so funny and it makes me laugh every time it's always Uh, crazy to me that that's vin diesel yeah uh yeah so logan greatest superhero ever made superhero movie ever made um james mangold cooked here Um, plays cook again yeah get your juice um, back yeah i mean he cooked with the wolverine and uh oh he did walk the line yeah too? i was just about to say walk the line is amazing yeah that's like one of the few biopics that i actually like yeah i love walk the line it's oh, really shit. good um, i don't really know dang, so dial of destiny with... is kind of like an outlier he it really definitely does. is yeah so james mangold just ignore dial of destiny and keep doing what you do best yeah um, i think he's making the bob dylan movie which i'm very excited for oh i thought that was scorsese oh i don't know uh, um but yeah yeah james yeah. mangold go check out logan it's on disney plus um yeah it's an immaculate piece of film the pacing um, is really good too like it's yeah, a long it's, movie but it flows past almost two hours and 20 minutes but yeah, yeah it feel it feels like it's an hour 
It's yeah. so the pacing is unbelievable. Uh, yeah. Yeah, just an immaculate film. Uh, yeah, go check it out. Um, yeah. What's our? Uh, oh, our movie next week is Platoon. Uh, I think Platoon, which uh, my brother AJ will be on for. Um, I told him he could be on like four months ago, and I <laughs> forgot that I told him that. And then he texted me this week, and he's like, "Hey, are we still doing Platoon?" And I was like, "Oh shit, I told you that." <laughs> and I was like, "Yes, definitely." So nice. he is very knowledgeable about film. Mm. He loves film, so he will be on next week. And then next, fr- sweet. And then this Friday, we're reviewing The Shining. The Shining. Um, <sighs> and then next Friday, we are finishing up our Kubrick Watt deep dive. Um, this Friday, I'll put a survey up, see what director you want us to do next. But next Friday, we'll be reviewing Full Metal Jacket and Eyes Wide Shut with uh, the one, the only, Jagger Nelson. He will make his return uh, to guest, <laughs> be a guest star on The Average Film Enjoyer. Um, we're going to get the fellas back together. It's going to be a good time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, before we finish up, Evan, do you want to go through what, what we've been watching recently? I would love to. <sighs> uh i'm so um, emotional now I think, the logan always makes yeah. me fucking emotional so i didn't watch it again god dude it's um so good. on the 19th <clears throat> excuse me i watched cheaper by the dozen two cheaper by oh, the yeah. fucking so P2. did i so good so good and then after that i watched it's such a beautiful day this is Don Hertzfeld's animated ma- magnum opus of a film. It is all hand drawn, narrated. <clears throat> it's about a guy named yeah. Bob who has some memory issues. Have you seen it? No, but it's been high up on my watch list for a good good amount of time. It's am- I watched it twice in like a day and a half. Yeah. It's amazing. It's re- and it's an hour long. Like go watch it if you haven't seen it. It's really really good. <clears throat> Yeah. Uh, what about what did you watch that day? Um, you just bust out yours and then I'll bust out mine because you have like. Oh sure, okay. You have like I've, five. I have four more. I have four more. Yeah. Then I watched fucking Paul King's Peak Wonka. Shout out yeah, to Ryan from the Shop by Shop podcast. Go fuck yourself. Wonka is amazing. Who? Shout out who? Ryan. Yeah. Oh god, dude. Dude. Well, he you. Hates I mean, you've movie. seen his Spider-Man takes. You know. He's, True. His his opinions are very valid. Yeah, um, that that was amazing. Such a feel good movie. Really enjoyable. Songs were peak. He said the songs weren't memorable. I highly disagree. I was singing at work today. I was just like chocolate, and there's chocolate to myself <laughs> all fucking day. Yeah. yeah, this it was great. I will probably watch it again very soon. Really good. Then I watched Due Date, which I've seen many great. times, not for a long time. Great movie. Underrated. I haven't seen it in a few years. Really, It's really funny. Yeah, yeah. the dynamic between Zach and Robert Downey Jr. is just hilarious. God, I love Zach Galifianakis. He's so Yeah, good. me too. Uh, so that held up really well. I gave that three and a half. Also, I gave Wonka, and it's such a beautiful day, and Cheaper by the Dozen, two, five stars. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then I watched a movie I had been really excited to watch for a while called fallen leaves mm-hmm. this is a movie out of finland um it's a very simple slice of life type film it's set in present day and it's just about these two people kind of going through it not having the best time and meeting yeah. and you know interacting it has this very like one car y feel to it almost Hell yeah W. uh the cinematography is really cool i give that four stars also it has one of the cutest dogs i've ever seen in my life in a movie and it really really good yeah and it's like an hour 20 it, it went by really fast i liked it a lot we love short movies yeah and then i watched logan peak Peak. And also, I binged about seven hours of Twin Peaks yesterday because I'm trying to get w. through it so I can watch Firewalk with me. And yeah. once I finish this, I'm gonna go watch it all night Hell again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's see here. I also on the 19th watched Cheaper by the Dozen too. Peak might be better oh, than man. the first one. Um, Eugene Levy is fucking hilarious. Oh, uh, so... Then I decided to follow that up with more Peak. With Tron Legacy. Um, peak. Oh, good. Uh, oh, my God. 
Uh, and I think this is one you wanted to talk about. Ten things I hate about you. One star. Yeah, what are you doing here? Absolute shit. Maybe never watched... the best. <sighs> I have never watched a movie with more hateable characters. Oh my god, you are insane. Let's go over these characters. Julia Stiles and her sister. Both bitches <laughs> god they're the worst they're the worst yeah they're both so annoying bianca her sister is so manipulative and um joseph gordon levitt's character isn't likable because he's an idiot for going back out with her oh you're not gonna go out with this one guy oh but you'll go out with me oh great i i love having sloppy seconds um oh my god. and julia styles is just so unbelievably annoying Heath Ledger's character, not a good dude. The fucking goat. Heath Ledger. Oh I love my Heath Ledger. God. I love Heath Ledger. He's not a good dude in this movie. Also, maybe not even hyperbole, the hottest man from a 90s rom-com in this movie. Sure. But the scene on the person. football he's field, not, like, when he's... Ugh. He's not a good dude. He's... he's the. I mean, the whole he didn't have to take the money at the end of the movie. He was already going to take her to prom, but he took the money anyway. That's not a good thing. Joseph Gordon. The only character enjoyable character was David Crumholtz. David Crumholtz yeah, was goat, an absolute, absolute delight goat. in this movie. Um, but yeah, not good. Didn't enjoy it. Hated it actually. Yeah. Um, this is my favorite nineties rom-com by the way. Well, that really sucks. Five stars. Uh, have you ever seen say anything? No, I haven't. Oh, you got to check that out. That's my favorite 90s rock I did rock watch rock. Clueless, and I fucking hated it. Oh, I've never seen it. Um, I watched John Wick for the first time. Peak. Really? Yeah, I've never seen it. I'm, I'm going to try to finish them off this week. Um, Dude. Ch- Chad Stahelski just cooked here. I mean, that movie was... F- it was really cheesy and dumb, but it was badass. I really Bro, enjoyed it. You're, I mean, that, you're in for a treat. That, it, that in my opinion, is a perfect action movie. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it was awesome. <clears throat> John Wick brings the lore good. on top of the God tier action. Yeah. Uh, and then I watched the sequel to a movie I had watched a while back. Uh, the collector, I watched the sequel to that, the collection, um, some absolutely gory kills. Um, yeah, that movie's got some crazy kills. Have you seen the collection? I think so. Yeah. Uh, if it's the, the one I'm thinking of. The Collector is also very good. Um, but yeah, those both of those are very good. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm trying to bust these out. Uh, watch last year's The Hunger Games, Ballad of Songbird and Snakes. Oh yeah, you yeah, didn't like this, eh? That sucked ass, dude. Didn't I you mean, give it a half star? Yeah. <laughs> oh uh, my god. It wasn't good. It... None of the characters were likable. Um, I love Rachel Zegler. I think she's an amazing actress, and I'm excited to see what she does in the future. But I thought she was fucking terrible in this movie. I thought she was so bad. <laughs> um, the whole southern accent thing totally did not belong, and it was, yeah, she just wasn't good. Um, well, but, I was excited to watch it. <laughs> that movie... Well, I'm on the minority, dude. Yeah. Like, I have people that have this at five stars, four and a half stars four stars you know people enjoy it i just didn't um and it was a two and a half hour movie but it felt so empty um yeah it is really long it's so dumb uh i watched shrek for the first time god uh, can't believe i waited 20 years to watch that Ooh. masterpiece yeah i can't either so good um watched another a24 horror film called the hole in the ground uh not good it's just <laughs> That director definitely has a hard on for Ari Aster. Um, <laughs> Another one of them. Yeah. Uh, and then I watched uh, a 2004 heist movie called Criminal with John C. Riley and Diego Luna and Maggie Gyllenhaal. Shout out Tubi. Um, it was pretty good, actually. It was a good time. I love good heist movie. And yeah. John C. Riley is goaded. Um, and then I watched uh, Bo Burnham Make Happy for the first time. Uh certified genius dude he is god he is so good um love me some bo burnham also shout out to inside i have been listening to that soundtrack content are you ready for some content (laughs) dude it's so good i've been listening to that like on loop the past few days um i might give that a rewatch um and then i watched jackass forever 
I oh love God, it's so good. I love. I saw that in theaters. It was amazing. I'm sure. I just want to be friends with all of them, except yeah, for Bam. Too. Bam really gets on my nerves. <laughs> Bam's a bad guy. Yeah, they're uh, a good dude. But all the rest of them seem like they're actual like good dudes and would be fun dudes to hang out with. Like, I don't know. They just like all of them. There's not one jackass b- besides Bam. Like, there's not one member from Jackass Forever that I would not want to hang out with. Like, I love Johnny. Um, I love Steve-O. Uh, Chris, Pontius, and Dave England are my two favorites. I mean, Danger Aaron, Wee Man yeah. is the GOAT. Danger Aaron takes the most insane punishment on that. I mean, the cup testing thing. That whole thing yeah. is crazy, <clears throat> dude. Did you know that in Jackass 3, when he gets his tooth tied to the Lambo, and they drive away, and it pulls it out? Yeah. Do you remember that? They, yeah, That fractured his skull. Are you serious? It sh- Yeah, you should search it up. There's an x-ray, and it's sent to crack all the way up his, like, cheek up into his head. That's insane. Yeah. They're, like... D- this is how I describe the Jackass movies. You know, like all that dumb shit you used to do with your buddies in high school where you'd all be drunk or high and just go do dumb shit? Yeah, that's Jackass. Them just doing dumb shit. <laughs> it's so fun. I love them. Um, and then I watched Remember, where... Uh, Dude, I want to watch that. With the aid of a fellow Auschwitz survivor and a handwritten letter, an elderly man with dementia goes in search of the person responsible for the death of his family. It's pretty good. Yeah. Um, Dean Norris plays a crazy Nazi in it. That was pretty sick. Oh, oh um, We love let's Dean see. Norris. Rewatched X-Men. Already talked about that peak. Um, delved deeper into Kurosawa's filmography. Watched Throne of Blood. I need to watch that. Me and Jagger's... Um, little uh agreement where i give him one he gives me one um i he currently has to watch enemy the denis villeneuve film um which is one of my favorites um denis most underrated picture uh but yeah that was pretty good um nice modern retelling of macbeth i love macbeth Um, Jackass 2.5 watch that i really like these 0.5 jackasses because you kind of get to see how these bits were done and how they were made and where the ideas came from and then you get to see the ones that didn't make the cut which is also fun like in this one there was a dizzy boxing where aaron and uh i think it was chris they spun them or it was dave england and aaron and they spun them in these office chairs a bunch and then they had a box it was really funny um god even when i describe these bits (laughs) i like this is so dumb (laughs) it really is stupid I love it. Um, yeah, and then too. Logan. Um, and when is Shrek 2? Really um, maybe today. Who knows? The um, best. I might throw it on while I play Skyrim. I just finished. I've played through. I've played Skyrim like four different times. Like I've started from the beginning like four different times. Um, but I always get. And then after I say this, I will we'll be done. I always get distracted with side quests. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, I'm like, oh, I want to go become a werewolf. Oh, I want to go become an assassin. Oh, I want to go become a vampire. And then I get bored, and then I stop playing. Um, and so, as I told you, I think I talked about this on the last episode. I started yeah. a uh, Skyrim replay, like a playthrough, um, I, which I haven't done in a long time. Um, I finished the campaign yesterday. I finished Hell the main yeah. campaign, which I have never, ever <laughs> done before. Um, the final boss was really hard. Uh, like it'd be like, all right, I gotta get some health off of him. Quick save, quick save. So, and then you you get some health off of him. Quick save, quick save. So when you die, you don't go all the way back yeah. to the beginning. Um, and I was like, I was constantly going into the menu trying to get scrolls and spells and all this stuff. And it, it yeah, it was crazy. Um, but it was a good time. But yeah, that's our episode for today. Join us Friday for our review of Stanley Kubrick's masterpiece, The Shining, my number yeah. two of all time. Um, and then join us Tuesday for our review of Platoon with my brother-in-law, AJ Flossmark. Um, if you want to find us on socials, Evan is Evan0567 on Letterboxd. I'm Trey the Film Noob everywhere. Um, go to afepod.com if you want to cop some average film enjoyer merch. Um, we have a bunch of stuff up there right now, a bunch of really cool stuff. We even got shirts for your dogs. Um... 
that is true. We do have a Beauty and the Beast puppy T-shirt. So go get hell yeah. Go get your uh, puppy T-shirts. Um, and yeah, if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe. We appreciate it. Comment down below what your thoughts on Logan are, or maybe what your favorite superhero film is. Um, uh, if you're listening on Spotify, please follow us. Give us a follow um, so you can be let know when we drop new episodes. <clears throat> um, yeah. And are you gonna watch? Friends. Are you gonna watch Room Two Thirty Seven, the documentary about I The Shining? I haven't watched it. Oh, don't watch it. Oh, really? It's yeah. No, it's good to, for me to go on a little rant here. I went and saw that in the theater because oh, the local art theater was doing like a showing of it, and then after that, they were doing a showing where they play The Shining backwards and forwards at the same time. Oh yeah. Um, which I'm sure you've heard of. I've heard uh, it. Yeah. Yeah, it's. It's really, uh, it's the biggest load of bullshit I've ever heard. <laughs> it's a bunch of conspiracy theorists talking about The Shining that don't know what they're talking about. It's, don't watch it. It's, Sounds exhausting. It really is. It's kind of funny because you realize how fucking stupid these people yeah. are in the documentary. <laughs> but it was <clears throat> enjoyable. Um, but yeah, we'll be reviewing The Shining, um, giving our thoughts on what it all means. Um and about that wild ass ending. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, and we'll see you next time on the average film enjoyer.